Hey, welcome back boys and girls. Here we are looking at uh, the Tesla Model Y again. And we're going to start off with a couple of comparisons between the Model 3 and the Model Y. And I'm going to start off nice and easy. So uh, everybody knows what a sun visor is. Some of the things that we've been talking about, mm, not so much, but this I'm sure you're going to understand. So um, inside you just seen something that looked like this. And then when you wanted to move it sideways uh, or thereabouts, you'd, you'd have a little snap hook like this. And uh, when you wanted to move it, you'd pull the, uh, you'd pull the sun visor away and uh, it would unclick from here. <clears throat> that was the Model 3. The Model Y has something that's kind of cool. Um, it doesn't have a little snap fit. It has a magnet. So when you uh, put the sun visor into its proper position, um, you just, you just, it would come close to the, uh, come close to the magnet and would pop right in place. So this is kind of, we've never seen anything like this. So kind of a new idea for, uh, for Tesla. <clears throat> Seems to be a couple of them that, uh, that I'm going to talk about today, especially in the comparison between the three and the Model Y. <clears throat> so let's start by looking at the, uh, the Model 3. So the Model 3 headliner, uh, let me show you what it looks like for real. Um, okay, so that's the part you'd see. And that's interesting, but not interesting to, to us usually. Usually what we want to see is what's going on in back of it. So here, the headliner is pretty much standard to what everybody would use. This, is, um, uh, uh, this headliner uses a thermal set, long glass, uh, uh, long fiberglass. And, uh, and what it does is it, uh, you, you put the thing in, it heats up, and, um, and, uh, and then you have the form. And you'll notice that it's quite um, flexible. Um, <clears throat> it's easy to bend these. Uh, the guys on the floor sometimes hate them and other times loathe them. So that's kind of what we're looking at here is a standard build for the, uh, for the, for the headliner. Um, this is using something called Alcaterra. It's a suede, uh, imitation suede that um, is hugely expensive. Um, people like it in luxury vehicles, um, and so that's probably why it's here, but, um, but it's not something that you're going to touch every day. This is usually on things that you're going to touch. When we look at this, um, we can see that, um, that they use lots of glue. <laughs> um, so with, uh, with this type of a job, you can't, um, there's nothing you can do to make snap fits or whatever. You have to add other things to the, uh, to the product in order to make it so that you can put it together. So you'll see glue here, glue here. Um, you'll see that this has been uh, pumped, uh, pumped uh, adhesive has gone down and then they've squashed it into place. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and you can see over here, this is a, a a hick, uh, sorry, a head, head impact uh, part. It's an extruded piece of aluminum and you can see that that's also glued in place. Now, uh, that's conventional and, uh, and everybody does it that way, but <laughs> it's vastly different on the Model Y. Uh, so let's have a look here. So let's just look at this one speaker. Um, so here you've got the speaker with uh, massive amounts of glue and then you've got the speaker on the new uh, Model Y. The Model Y is so different uh, from everybody else's and it's just no comparison. So let's start off with what's it made out of. This, this, is, a, this is a plastic injection molding. <clears throat> um, I've been in business for a long, long time. We've been tearing cars apart for at Monroe for over 30 years <clears throat> and uh, We've never seen a PC ABS um, uh, headliner uh, ever. Now this is in two pieces uh, because a tool for this size would be astronomical. Not to mention the, the molding machine you'd have to pop it in. I can't imagine what it would look like. It's, it's a very, very big piece. But there's a reason why. So why would we have plastic injection molding? Uh, well, one, one thing is this has got 100% of, uh, of the volume. So what are we going to get out of that? Well, we're going to get a whole bunch of features that are molded in place. So if you have a look here, you can see this 
little clip is sitting on top of something, a riser, that's molded into the, uh, into the um, um, PC ABS. It's, uh, it makes it easier for, um, for the operator to put everything together. As we, uh, as we go through here, um, we look at the uh, HIC part that we saw just a little while ago, and we can see here that this is not made in a conventional way. Um, this is made more like a spring that has a coating on top and then uh, flocking on top of that. Flocking is used to get rid of NVH kinds of things. And again, this is kind of cute because if we look over here, we can see a hook. And then I think, uh, I think you just saw, but you might not have. But anyway, under here, you're going to see a snap fit. So hook and snap is one of my all-time favorite uh, ways of putting product together. Uh, hook and snap, uh, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't, uh, it's always in the same place. It's, uh, it's easy for the operators to do, so it's one of the things that I really like a lot. The other thing that we noticed here is that there's uh, PUR, polyurethane foam, everywhere. Um, everywhere. It, it's uh, more foam than I think I've ever seen before. So we've got a couple of things that we've never really encountered. Number one, that, uh, that this is an injection mold, two injection moldings. It's split right here. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we'll mention it right now. It's split right here. And we'll show you the, the joining patch that they've put in in order, to, uh, in order to make this thing work. So here's the joining patch right here. And uh, what happens is this, I'm gonna show you something in a little bit, but this is a, uh, um, uh, a, tether, uh, a tether locator. And so the bolt from, uh, from the, other, uh, the other part of the car is gonna snap right in there. We'll show you that in a little bit. But <clears throat> there's some things that uh, they, they kept the same. There's no grab handles on the, um, on the Y, and there was none on the uh, Model 3 either. I always wondered what grab handles are for. Again, you all know that I drive a Wrangler. We, there's grab handles, <laughs> and sometimes that's a handy thing to have if you're having a ride with me, but, uh, but they're, not, they're not like decorations. They're there for a real reason. In a normal car, I, I never could understand why there was grab handles except for putting your laundry in it or something. So the grab handles are, are one thing that, uh, that's different. The other thing that's different is um, this is a cloth wrap, which is not totally unique but totally different than what you see there with the Alcatara, which is expensive. This is not expensive. And you can see too that it's easy to put together. These are called uh, heat staking uh, tools. They're a little machine that you, you pull the, uh, the cloth down and, uh, and then uh, after it's, uh, after it's uh, sealed to the, to the visual side, then on the other side you, you take a heat stake and you pop these things in and uh, they, don't, uh, they, they don't unravel on you. Good idea. So let's look at a good idea here. See, this is one of those little clips that I was talking about. So it, I can take the wire now and slide that in and hold it in place. I don't know whether I even need the tape. I, I wouldn't, but anyway, they did. So we go over here. Oh, what happened here? So you can see that uh, that tape's still in place. This would have gone over the top of that, and I don't understand why they didn't do it. The operator would have had to know because, see, He's got lots of extra, extra cabling sitting out there. So I don't, I don't really understand what happened there, but that's a manufacturing thing that uh, they, uh, the, the supplier who created this or whatever, that, that, that has to be looked at. People need to do everything consistently, one time after another, after another, after another. It can't, can't change. Let's move over here. <clears throat> so I mentioned that... Uh, <laughs> There's a lot of uh, uh, PUR here. So some of it's for NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. Some of it's for head impact. But uh, they've, they've gone crazy with, uh, with, with the stuff here to try and keep it as quiet as they can. So let's uh, fold that out of the way and have a look at this. This is a crash tether. So if you do get into an accident, um, I don't want this falling down on the heads of my occupants. So we found that they've got crash tethers uh, in lots of different places. This is one that we uh, tore apart to try and get it out of the car. But you can see that the, uh, these things are relatively, uh, rel relatively robust. Let me show you what they look like when they're in the vehicle. 
So here's one of the um, here's one of the uh, headliner tethers that we put back in place so you can have a look. So they would if the if there's a crash, they tear free and they would hold it so that uh, the occupants wouldn't be hit by anything else inside the car. Okay, so now we've looked at some some stuff there. Let's have a look at a couple of other things we found in the last couple of days. Um, this uh, this uh, B pillar um, has a lot of surprises in it. So this is uh, this has got the camera, and it's got the antenna for the keyless entry inside here. It's a rigorous snap fit, which I kind of like. But I, I other like the, the other things I like is that the um, uh, the closeout, the blackout here, is also um, been overmolded. So this uh, this part. Sorry, that part is put inside of a molding machine, and then they do what's called dual durometer uh, injection molding. So you get the the uh, cushy little uh, foam stuff um, helping you out for NVH and also for sealing. So so that's that's that. Now now the bad news. <clears throat> so let's go down here. Um, so we were real happy with uh, a lot of the things that had to do with the wire troughs until we took a, a closer look. So first thing that happened was I picked that off. This has been cut off um, and it was cut off uh, I think when the harness was in place. Mm, that's a bit scary. I, I don't think I'd be real happy about that. And then this I started picking it off. This was the tape that used to hold it down. So that's kind of like we can see the scarf scuff marks here where the tool went in. Looks like a Dremel or something like that. And then they cut this off. My guess is that this should have gone through here. This part of the harness should have gone through here holding this in place. And then this would have had some sort of a crown that would have held it together so that it would attract better. It might be that, uh, I don't know exactly what happened. All I can tell you is that um, it's on both sides, the other side's the same way. And that kind of stuff, um, hmm, I don't, if I was Elon, I wouldn't be happy. Uh, and, uh, and you can see, oh, here's some more. So I know that this was cut off, and that one over there has got even more example. So, <clears throat> good news, bad news, as usual, with everything we look at, this is what we get paid a lot of money for, is to find out where there's been problems associated with the building of the car or the design of the car, and how can we make it uh, so that it gets more value for the customer with less cost. And that's, that's what Monroe and Associates uh, has built its reputation on. These, uh, these kinds of little features like this, this is the manufacturing uh, and design that probably needs to be looked at a little bit by, uh, by the folks at Tesla, but all in all, uh, this, uh, this is a pretty good car. <clears throat> These little chicken shit things don't, mean it, don't matter that much. So now, um, okay, so we, we, uh, we found out that there's lots of people that would really like to have bits and pieces from this vehicle. And, um, and I, uh, I'd really like to try and stay alive. So. We're selling a lot of things, um, and they'll be up on the uh, they'll be up on the uh, web page shortly. Um, uh, we already had uh, one of these dust shields um, sold to uh, Jim P, um, and uh, the dust shield went for 750 bucks. We have one more, um, so we have bits and pieces. If you have something that you'd like um, from the car. Uh, no problem. We're going to be selling quite a bit. You'll see a, a list of things that uh, we, if there's two of them on the car, we're selling one. So this is um, uh, spring, uh, uh, the spring assembly. Um, we've got all kinds of little bits and pieces. And by the way, I don't want you guys who have a Tesla Model 3 to feel bad either, but uh, we have these components from the Tesla Model 3. Um, we have a bunch of those as well. And quite frankly, uh, we're selling the tables online, um, uh, but uh, we, can, we can create those same kind of tables for, uh, 
for a Model 3 person. We'll only have two tables for the for the uh, Model Y because we have uh, because they have two different kinds of tires, and they're hugely expensive. Um, we have uh, three, uh, actually four uh, Model um, Model 3 tires that we can turn into the high boys or the um, or the uh, card table kind of things. So anyway, uh, a lot of things are happening. I'm, uh, I'm really happy with the way things are going here in the teardown. This is a much finer build than, uh, I can find little bits and pieces here and there, but this is a much finer build than, uh, than what I saw on the three. Um, uh, you gotta take your hats off to the people at uh, Tesla. By the way, there's a, uh, there's another podcast that's called um, um, Tesla Third Row or Third Row Tesla. I can't remember which, but anyway, I was on there and uh, that was with um, Elon Musk uh, made a guest appearance uh, and he didn't yell at me. <laughs> so uh, so I, I recommend you, you might want to tune in and have a look at what was going on there. That's quite a long one. Um, and, uh, and I guess it gets all back down to uh, try and stay safe out there. And then last, of course, um, uh, please tip your, uh, your cashiers or uh, get, those, uh, get those money cards to, uh, to whoever the bigger stores are so that they can distribute it uh, to their people. Have a great day, everyone. And uh, please come back and see what's coming up next.